dive into a topic that's really, really got a lot of debate around it, right? The topic is uh, placement of your speakers, whether against a wall is better or whether bringing them out away from the wall is better. I'm gonna dive into a topic that's been talked about exhaustively. And let's get your comments and opinions on it. Uh, before I go on, um, make sure that you hit that like button, that thumbs up. And if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button. Even if you turn the notifications off, I really appreciate you being a subscriber. I don't put out a ton of videos, so don't worry about me, you know, having a notification bell go off all the time. But anyway, today what I wanna get into is a video by Warp Academy. Now, Warp Academy is a, uh, it's a YouTube channel and the guy is like a sound engineer, so pretty smart guy, right? This, is this mistake ruining your acoustics and how to whatever, right? <clears throat> and the main thing to get here, it's pointing at this uh, 54 and a half hertz. It's basically what he's talking about is the lower end. So is the speaker placement affecting the lower end? What is better for your speakers? And that's key, it's your speakers, right? Because all speakers are a little bit different. I'm gonna be using my Energy RC series speakers hooked up to my Sony ZA1100ES home theater. I'm gonna be running through uh, calibration, I'm gonna be running through speaker placement, and we're gonna actually test some of the theories uh, that are in this video that I just watched earlier today. So it's kind of a spontaneous, there's no script, no idea or anything like that in my head. You're gonna go through this little experiment with me, which is all about front wall loading. And this information uh, was something that I gleaned from watching a video from this uh, Warp Academy, which they actually do a, um, they do uh, sound engineering, okay? So like the production side of it, but the, but the theory of what he's talking about, I think can actually apply toward uh, loudspeaker placement as well. Whether it's, you know, best to have them against the wall, best to have them a little bit out, best to, you know, come out a little bit further maybe. A um, lot of debate surrounding this, and a lot of it has to do with <laughs> your room, obviously, and the treatment of it. Like this room is absolutely horrible for sound because there's basically, other than, you know, furniture, there's not really much to break up the sound, and I've got a nine foot ceiling, so it's kind of echoey. All right, that being said, Let's watch a little bit of this video so that you can kind of get the concept here. 100 hertz and below, that frequency range begins to emanate in a more omnispherical direction. And as you get even lower, it becomes more and more omnispherical. So down in the very bottom of the speaker, the sound is radiating backwards as much or nearly as much as it's radiating forwards. So what's happening is, the drive signal of the monitor is projecting forwards. And because the monitor is right up against the wall, the reflection from the wall behind the monitor, that signal is back. nearly in phase with the drive signal of the monitor. And it's rejoining and causing constructive interference. And this is what's known as a minimum phase or minimum phase shift. So what happens when you have two frequencies that are identical, two waveforms that are identical, and you overlap them, they amplify each other. If they're perfectly in phase and perfect amplitude, they're gonna double, right? So that's exactly what we're seeing here. We're seeing nearly a six dB increase at 35 Hertz. Okay, small. Now that's, again, not a problem for me. So when you understand how this stuff works, you like, actually, that's an advantage because with monitor speakers, especially things that are like six inch, maybe below eight inch monitors, they have a pretty sharp roll off below 60 Hertz. That's what ports are designed to do. They're designed to give it uh, change the shape or the slope of the roll off and give it some extra oomph down in the bottom end where they roll off. But that's also what this front wall loading effect is doing by having the reflected signal rejoin the dry signal pretty much in phase. It's actually making the monitor low end more efficient and causing it to produce higher output. This is not a problem because we can easily compensate for this with EQ. I'm going to uh basically get into this little topic here. This is the video. I'm gonna put a link down below. Uh, is this mistake ruining your acoustics, right? 
So let's talk about front wall loading and the base response that we're getting in room. And today I'll be using for my like little uh, experiment, my home theater system. Um, <clears throat> I've got the Energy RC70 tower speakers uh, and my Sony ZA1100 ES home theater receiver. Uh, the other speakers involved, um, I'm gonna be focusing primarily on just two channel stereo right now. So just these two big speakers. Um, so I'll go ahead and, you know, make sure that the other ones aren't playing. But that being said, we're gonna be looking at the difference with the bass response when the speakers are against the wall or when they're forward. So stay tuned. If this is your first time here on this channel, do me a favor. Uh, you know, if you like the video, obviously give me a thumbs up. But if you can do me a huge, huge favor, man, I'm almost at a thousand subscribers and I could really use your help. Click that subscribe button. Uh, it's not that hard. Just look for it, click the subscribe button. There's going to be notifications for all or personalized or none. So whatever you choose there, it's up to you. I don't pump out a ton of videos, so don't worry about, you know, getting a lot of notifications from my channel. But uh, nonetheless, I really appreciate any subscribers. The fact is, is probably about 70% of my views on these videos, not these videos, but my videos are actually from uh, people who aren't subscribed. So yeah, my subscribers are watching, but also a lot more non-subscribers are watching. So if you are not a subscriber yet and you dig home hi-fi, you dig speakers, you dig home theater, you dig headphones, whatever, speaker stuff, why? Cool? All right, so let's go ahead and dive into this a little bit. What do we want to use for a background while I'm setting this thing up? How about, how about this crazy stuff, huh? All right, sounds good. PCM and what that linear PCM does is it's just two channels so whatever is being fed from my Apple TV box to the TV back down to the receiver in HDMI arc okay whatever signal is going into the receiver is going to be processed so that's the way I've got this set up so there's not um, any stereo up mix or anything so if you notice you'll hear music coming from the speakers, I'll bring up close. All right, but when we move to the other speakers, we're not gonna hear anything. I think you should be able to hear it's just coming from it's coming from the right and left. It's not coming from the center channel. Let's check the Atmos speakers. The little speakers I'm using for Atmos, the Energy RC Micros on this little 15 degree stand. We're getting close to those. Okay, nothing. And let's take a look at the subwoofer. Let's see what's going on with the subwoofer here. All right, so right now the subwoofer is actually on. And I'm not sure if you could hear that or not, but I can feel it. It's just barely vibrating ever so slightly. Um, these are the satellite speakers. Little Energy RC10s. These are phenomenal in their own right. But basically, the uh, you can tell that they're not on. So the only thing we're listening to right now is stereo. 
So let's go ahead and look at some more things that I've got going on. Um, you'll see the computer down here. This is hooked up to, uh, let's see, this is Spectroid. It's an app, just measures uh, frequency response. It creates a hold line here. And then the yellow line is the, is the live music. And then this thing is a waterfall graph. So you can see kind of decay and stuff like that. Uh, let's see what else I got going on so, here. You know I'm trying. It's a 32-bit stereo mic that I'm going to try to use to see if, uh, if there's a big difference between that mic and like the mic on my camera. And I'm using the Omni mic uh, from Dayton feeding the Spectroid. So that's a calibrated microphone, should work out fine. Oh, last piece of the puzzle here. Um, and it's gonna come in handy at some point, maybe not this video, it might, I'm not sure, but there's another video I wanna do with, uh, with uh, the base the subwoofer itself that I'm gonna use that for. Also from Warp Academy. This is exciting. We got a lot of cool stuff to figure out here. So hang in there with me, okay? All right, so let's get into this a little bit and let's go ahead and clear this out. And here you'll see that this is establishing a, a nice uh, hold line, okay? happening in the room right now. I'll go ahead and uh, turn this up so you can see it as it gets a little bit louder. Of course I had to put my remote way over here. You remember back in the old days, volume knob. We used to get a lot of exercise back then. Unfortunately. This is going to establish a baseline for us. And what you're seeing here is actually the result of the Sony, um, Sony software for auto calibration. Just the left and right speakers going along with the subwoofer. And currently, I believe I have the front speakers set to small with a crossover.
with that. If you want to know more about our mixing and mastering services, please visit us on drmix.com. See you later. Okay, so we've established, um, this is how it's set up right now. This was done uh, months ago. I did the frequency, uh, I did the uh, auto calibration through the receiver. And what you're seeing here is basically the left and right speakers only and the subwoofer. Subwoofer is connected to the LFE jack, the sub out on the receiver. And then those tower speakers, uh, they are just hooked up to um, the left and right. This is a uh, an image of what is going on right now. Um, definitely a little bit bass heavy for sure, which kind of surprises me, but uh, you know, how how good can this uh, Sony calibration really be? This one is a setting called Pure Flat, I believe. Oh, I'll be right back. You are awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a great day. Yep. You do the same. Drive safe. Yeah, thank you. All right. So, <laughs> what were we doing here? Okay. So, let's take a look at uh, what our frequency is going to be like without the equalization of the receiver, okay? And I'm going to try to, uh, you know, take out the sub out of the equation too, so that all we're listening to is the two floor standards. calibration mic in and get it set up. 